Welcome back to the Junius Mulpy channel for the second installment of today's news headlines and unscripted extemporaneous discussion regarding the world we live in. Now, uh, I don't normally do a double video day just because I've got other things going on and I'm too busy, but I figured today we would go ahead and being that it's the new year and it's the first day, first real work day, weekday of 2016, we take a moment to focus on one of the main characters here on the Junius Malpy channel, that main character being uh, the archaic and barbarous relic that we call gold. Yes, AU, uh, the yellow metal. What's it gonna do in 2016? Where can it go from here? Um, again, you know how I'm all over the place sometimes on these videos, and uh, we're going to bounce around a little bit and throw different points out here and there and make weird, irrational statements. Um, I saw something the other day regarding the stock market, and it was somebody saying that basically the market had, the only place it had to go from here was down. Uh, it finished the year extremely high, it had a really big banner year, and as we saw this morning, that seemed to hold true, that, that theme carried on. Uh, the market fell opening at 450 points and uh, it's still down somewhere around 400 points. I just looked a few moments ago. But I think the opposite hold might hold true as well. You know, gold had a pretty beat up year. And uh, with the fundamentals being still strong and in my opinion uh, very good for gold, I think that gold has almost nowhere to go from here but up. I think it's going to look like a really good year. Now, don't, don't go making all kinds of crazy uh, decisions and selling kidneys to buy gold, but uh, I think we can remain hopeful. I think we can remain focused, and uh, I know I continue to, to get and acquire as much of a position in metals as I can. Of course, my first goal always being the elimination of the most evil, and that being debt. Uh, getting rid of debt as we've all discussed on here. So always get, make sure you're debt free before you start, you know, stacking. Now, why do I think gold has a very good year coming up? Well, not everything's down this morning. As you saw, gold's up. It's one of the few things uh, that went up today across all the different sectors. And there's a lot going on in the world right now. We're seeing tensions in the Middle East in a way that is beyond what we've seen in the past. Um, I mean, we've seen the tide of the tsunami of refugees pouring into Europe to the point where it's one in 80 people in Germany now is a refugee. Um, you know, a lot of those are going to probably be somewhat of a burden on the, the welfare state of Europe, the socialist welfare state of Europe, because they're going to need to be supported. They're going to need food, clothing, housing. They're going to need to be incorporated into society somehow. So uh, that could weigh on the European economy. It really could. I believe it will. Now they're talking about, uh, you know, bringing more of them into the United States and into Canada. And they, I'm, I'm not going to get on that whole bandwagon and and make this about that isolated situation. I'm just painting a picture here of all the different puzzle pieces that are fitting into what's going to shape 2016. We've seen China having a constriction in their economy. There's a lot of people talking about China. You've got the big countries that buy gold, India, China, Russia among others, and they're continuing to take up a huge position in metals, in gold in particular. Uh, the United States and England, not so much. Now, a lot of people like to focus on how gold had such a bad 2015. So let's look back a year before we start really talking about 2016. Well, in most currencies, gold actually had a pretty good year in 2015. It advanced in both the Canadian and Australian dollars, uh, it rocketed higher in the Argentine pesos and Brazilian real. It climbed higher in Mexican pesos and Russian rubles and the South African rand and Turkish lira and the Ukrainian harvinia. However you pronounce that. Hats off to some of you Canadian viewers and all of you viewers from other countries. It seems like there's more foreigners that are part of this Junius Malpe community, this Junius Malpe channel, than there are um, any Americans. I feel like sometimes I'm the only American on this channel. There's so many of you guys are... Uh, in the comment section or from Australia or Canada or even you know I see some of you showing up now from Asian nations and that's exciting because we really are a global 
community on this channel. And I, and I think that's great because we're able to get bits and pieces of information that some of us might not see where we are. Got to send out a thank you to some of our Canadian viewers. One of you in particular, I wish I could remember your name right now as I make the video, but you know who you are. I've got you in my mind. Um, he pointed out recently in a video that he wishes he could come down here and buy gold uh, because in Canada, the price is just so much higher than it is here in the United States. And he thinks that uh, we're fortunate down here, south of the border, to be able to buy gold at the prices we're seeing because they're not as fortunate up in Canada. Their currency is not able to acquire the same weight in gold for the prices we are here. So that, that brings up an interesting point. You know, look at this chart right now. Gold's performance in 2015% change by currency. Look at some of those currencies. Look at some of the gains that were made in those currencies. Uh, some of gold went up extremely well. I mean, if you were in Brazil or Argentina, you, you would really have done well in buying gold at the beginning of 2015. You would have made a 37 to a 33% um, increase in the value of your currency by buying metals then. Uh, yeah, in the United States, down 11%, but look at that, you know, Canada up 7%. So any of you Canadians who bought metals did really well. So for you in America, those of us, I guess I'm talking to myself, being the lone American on this channel most of the time, when something's down 11%, but it's going up everywhere else, and historically it's gone up, even in, in our own country, in our own currency, it, it would behoove me at this point to think, well, Wow, it's 11% discounted. I, th I think now is a good position to take uh, in gold and to start acquiring some gold. Now, with gold's biggest decline in U.S. dollars uh, this last year, this would be an excellent opportunity, like I just said, to buy gold with dollars during 2016. After a strong start to the year in 2015, the dollar effectively topped out and traded sideways for most of the year. And you'll see that in just a moment. Uh, the dollar put in a double top during late November around the 100 level, the same resistance it faced in March. So here is a chart of the dollar. Now look at that. Look at from 2014 uh, up through the end of 15 we just had. Do so you see that meteoric rise? Somewhat nice chart there. Um, the dollar going up. Well, that exactly, as we all know, gold being um, valued in dollars is the reason you look at this chart that gold was going down over that same period of time. So gold uh, pretty much reacted to a strengthening US dollar. Now is there a chance that the US dollar is going to weaken? Well, I don't know. Look at what we talked about earlier today. We talked about the auto makers and the auto industry. Um, you could almost be sure that if the US auto industry started struggling and having a hard time in production and there was a layoffs and a slowdown, that could have an effect on the US dollar. It's a major export, US autos. Well, we'll have to just wait and we'll have to see where that goes. The dollar, I don't believe it's going to hold at 100 for very long. Uh, I think the world's catching on that the, the US dollar is basically enforced by the military might of the US government. Should the U.S. dollar start to weaken again, as we've seen in the past, I think then we will then see a significant rise in gold, but not just for that reason alone. I think we're going to see gold rise because the U.S. economy might be entering an industrial recession. Uh, as you see here, the U.S. is slowing down on different fronts. Recently, U.S. still CEO Mario Longhi made the rounds of the financial shows and upped the ante on his concerns regarding the U.S. industrial metals industry. This sector has been the backbone of the U.S. economy for decades, and if it's sick, the whole economy is sick. And I didn't put the article up because it's just a lot of information to cover there and read, but long story short, there is a problem in the U.S. industry. In, uh, in steel, not in, now he's talking about metals, he's talking about steel and that type of a thing, and how China was dumping a lot of uh, steel on the market cheap, and, that, and that's kind of hurting that part of the U.S. economy. Now, uh, gold and silver surged today on a sustained buying and what's going on around the world, and we've just discussed that. We talked about Saudi Arabia, Iran, 
the world is a hotbed right now. There's a lot of stuff going on in the whole world. It's not just the Middle East. There's things taking place globally that I think are going to drive up the price of gold. We're still seeing a huge demand in India, you know, gold prices gaining there, the bullion market sustained from jewelry buying and just overall investment. As you know, a lot of the people in other parts of the world look at gold as a way to protect themselves from currency devaluations that take place in their part of the world. And I think we could learn a lesson from them. So today, investors went for gold as the market tumbled. Uh, adding into their positions. Even miner stocks did really well today. Uh, Newmont Mining Corp was up 2.3%. Barrick Gold was up 5%. I know some of you on this channel are uh, invested in some of the mining stocks, and that's fine. I think that's if that's something you want to do and support the mining industry that way and make some gains by picking up some mining stocks on the cheap, I think you might have done pretty well today, and I think you're going to probably continue to do well going into the future Hopefully, if the price of metal continues to go up, this is something we haven't even looked at, is the profit margin for these mining companies is going to be good. If, if metals rise, uh, if the value of gold goes up significantly, and somehow, even though oil is valued in dollars, if the price of oil can stay low, with gold going back up, it would offset some of the costs for extraction in increasing the profits for these mining companies. So if you own mining stocks and oil's cheap, but gold is worth a lot, like if gold somehow went back to $1,800 an ounce and oil is still sticking around at you know, $30, $40, $50 dollars a barrel, these mining companies would show some incredible profits and uh, be a good investment. Uh, yeah, in full disclosure, I don't own a single mining stock, just so you guys know that. I don't, it's just not something I do. When I buy gold, I buy gold, done. But, um, so what does the Junius Malpe channel think going into 2016? What, I, what do I see here? What's my prognosis of prognosises? Well, going into 2016, I think I see a strong case for gold. I can't pin down an exact number. I just don't see and don't believe we're going to see a further weakening in gold. Part of me believes it bottomed out. I think a lot of people were waiting for this time. Uh, for gold to hit this thousand dollar range, thousand fifty, sixty, eighty range, and now especially seeing uh, this kind of a cold bucket of water to the face, kind of a wake up call with the stock market dropping the way it did this morning, I say I I would say it's going to set a tone for 2016, kind of a reminder of the fragility of the markets, and harken back to the days of old like 2008 when uh, things were a little bit different and gold looked very appetizing even for those that didn't really believe in gold whatsoever that's gonna wrap it up for today 2016's introduction a double video day here's to the Junius Malpe channels what third year running uh, all 6300 subscribers my hat is off to all of you helping this channel grow keeping me motivated your comments, your liking, your sharing, you're hitting the subscribe button right there in the lower left side of your screen. You know, subscribing, posting these videos on Facebook, posting them on your Google Plus pages, sharing them and welcoming others into the community. Thanks for keeping the comment section polite and civil. I enjoy every comment you guys write down and all of your participation and just seeing this as a forum as a place where we can gather as a global discussion and talking about the things that we happen to be talking about. Thank you again for being part of the Junius Malpe channel. So don't forget to like, to share, and subscribe.